Here's an example of an inverting amplifier put to some practical use. This is the summing amplifier. Before we get too in into it, I created an op amp model, which I have included in the download button in the project files. I could not find an LM741 op amp model to import, but LT Spice did have a transistor level representation of the op amp in their examples folder. To see where uh, LT Spice keeps their examples, you go to File, Open, find the uh, LT Spice folder within your program files, go to examples, educational, and then here they have tons of example schematics which you can look at. And they have one that's actually called LM741. So when I opened that, I noticed that it was already placed into a feedback configuration, uh, inverting amplifier, um, and that they had already included the um, the inputs and like V plus and V minus, like the power supplies. So I went ahead and modified it and uh, created a symbol for it. So if you open the schematic for this, you can see that I just uh, deleted all of the feedback and placed um, ports for inputs and outputs so that when I created the model, they, they were all there. And I have that, uh, both the schematic and the symbol available for download. And I did go ahead and check it against the data sheet that's supplied by Texas Instruments. And it it operates within, within the same ballpark. The one major difference was that the slew rate was about four times larger at um, two megavolts per second. And the the only thing about that is, is I don't know what their test conditions were, so it's entirely possible this operates exactly the way that the LM741 from that's offered by Texas Instruments op, uh, operates. So you can see if I were to just delete this here, that it would be the exact same feedback configuration, the inverting amplifier configuration from the previous video. And simply by adding this resistor here, all that we are doing is changing how V out, uh, when this feedback current comes back through, that it's going to get distributed through two nodes instead of one. And the number of resistors that you place here, it's not one, two, three, there's no limitation. But if you're doing this like in an audio application and a mixer, I mean, I've only seen, you know, eight to 16 channels in a mixer. Uh, but this is exactly what, <laughs> this is an example of what that mixer circuitry might look like inside there. And so to make the calculation for V out easier, if you make the feedback resistor equal to the value of the resistors at the input, then you know that your gain is going to be R1 over R3. So we don't have to worry about what the gain is. Well, we can say, because we know that it's unity, it's just going to be 1. But well, we can say that V out is going to be equal to the negative of V in 1 plus V in 2. And that's why it's called a summer. So whatever I, whatever voltage or whatever signal I'm sending into as V1 and V2 are just going to be simply summed together. So our output here should be negative 4.5 when we run the simulation. So let's run it. Check out the output. And here uh, we're dealing with a non-ideal op amp because we're not getting to exactly negative 4.5. That's where you see this negative uh, 4.49 instead. And that's because there is going to be some internal offset between uh, the inverting and non-inverting terminal. The output resistance isn't going to be zero, and the input resistance isn't going to be infinite. It's just going to be very, very large. <clears throat> so let's play around with these values a little bit. So I have the rails, the uh, V plus and V minus at 15 and negative 15 volts. So as long as the sum of these two signals stays less than that, uh, it'll work. So let's try 7, and let's do this one at 6. 
run that. You're getting very, very close to 13, which is what you would expect to see. So let's see what happens if you try to go above 15. So here you're at negative 13.3. So let's try and get to 14. It could just be that we don't have the entire output swing of the full rail. So we may our output may not be able to go from negative 15 to 15 volts, but instead may only go down as far as two and then can go up as far as 13. So let's see if we put in seven, if we can get to 14. And no, so this looks like it's the top of the rail here. So our output, um, its max is looking at about 13.31 volts. So let's see what the min is. We have a DC value of one. 0.5. Okay, so we're getting to 1.5, all right. Let's see, we go 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Yeah, okay. So our min, we're getting getting pretty low here. 0.6. Yep. Okay. So we can go pretty low. Let's see if we can see how low we can go. So it looks like the min is about 4.5 millivolts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so that's it for the uh, LM741 based summing amplifier.